Hi, I'm Matt. Uh, thank you so much for being here at the end of the conference. I think there's one person after me, I think. One more? Okay, so I'm going to try to keep it exciting so that that last person has something, has a, has a good audience to work with. Um, I want to talk to you about paintable IoT. I realize that that sounds like probably a, quite an odd phrase. Um, we think there's something really compelling about using industrial coding technologies, industrial printing technologies, and contemporary IoT hardware. So, what does that mean? We want to combine the inherent scalability of coding's technologies with IoT hardware. So, coding's, to be perfectly clear, means paint. Right? It can mean a lot more than that. But there's a coating on the wall, there's a coating on the floor, there's a coating on the chairs. That's an incredibly scalable production process. And if you use specific sets of materials within that, known as functional materials or electrically conductive coatings, you combine that with printing, you can start to achieve some pretty amazing effects. What we do is essentially turn any substrate into a smart surface. So I'll explain in detail how we do that. Um, and first, I'll just start with a quick video demo. So what we've got here is a big piece of paper. That piece of paper can be as big as two by three meters. We add our hardware to it, and it becomes a really effective touch or proximity sensor. And as I, again, I'll go into the technical details a bit more, but the really important thing to understand as we watch this video again is that that piece of paper that just went down there is fundamentally a really low cost object. And it can be very, very large, it can take many different forms, and it's printed with normal printing processes. Here, we're sending data to the phone via Bluetooth, very straightforward demo. The way we do that is with a technology stack. So I want to go point by point through this stack so that we really understand how the system works. So we start with a low-cost substrate. So we can work on paper, plastic, wood, cardboard, anything you can print. Here, it's just a big piece of paper. We then add an electrically conductive coating. So the coating that you see here is very black, and that's because we use carbon. We're capable of using silver inks, carbon inks, copper inks, but we're really good at using these low-cost carbon inks, which are actually quite low electrical performance as well. But we can't just flood the entire piece of paper or just paint the floor. A lot of people say, can we just paint the whole floor? It's not quite that simple. The reason we use printing is that we have to use a very specific set of patterns. So this is a very straightforward pattern. It's just a grid. We start to use multi-layer patterns to get really specific performance. We then add our hardware, which is charging up that pattern. We're creating an electric field, and we're measuring disturbances in the field. I'm sure all the EEs in the audience know in theory exactly what's happening, which is that we're just making a very large-scale capacitive sensor. It's very easy to say that. It's very hard to do it reliably. And part of that reliability comes from our hardware, but the other part of the reliability comes from our software. For people who don't uh, have a kind of technical relationship with this from the beginning, what I often say is that our hardware is effectively like a camera body. And what we print is like a lens. So we can print different things and get totally different performance. The reason that I'm here is that we need to build connectivity into what we're doing. We know a ton about the fundamental physics, and we know a lot about the manufacturing processes that make this a viable product, but what we don't know a lot about is how we're going to connect lots of this to a network. And that's why I was invited here, and that's why I'm excited to talk to everybody. So again, I will re reiterate this at the end of my talk. I want you to come and talk to me, because we know that we benefit from low-power radio technologies, and we need help to build that part of our stack. So to go into a bit more detail about what our sensors do, we are able to detect the presence of a huge range of targets. So targets as small as an insect to as large as a person. We're really good at detecting liquids as well. We can detect at up to one meter, which is a pretty impressive distance for a capacitive sensor. We get a few different types of data. So we get, is someone there? So we get basic presence data, we get location data, we also get velocity and acceleration. And that's, to me, what makes it really interesting. This means we can build a really basic gesture, so swipe a surface and control a, a light, but it also means that we can tell how many people are going into a space or out of the space. And at the very end, I'll talk about some of the use cases that we're developing that really leverage this seemingly simple bucket of data to the best use. 
The last thing that you really need to understand and probably the most important thing is that we can detect through other materials. So we can project our field through other materials that are non-conductive. So as I said, we can use paper, plastic, wood, whatever as a substrate, but we can put that behind something else. So we can project through normal flooring materials, through wallpaper. We still have an effective sensing distance, uh, or I should say the effective sensing distance remains. That is a really powerful function because it means we can hide our sensors in lots of different spaces. Some of the use cases, you'll see the sensor. Many other use cases, it's hidden behind something else. Our vision for what we're doing is that we should be creating smart surfaces that are making buildings smart as we build them. So we think that coatings technology that is already used all over buildings can be leveraged to create intelligence all over buildings. We can create surfaces that are intimately installed into the building and provide a huge amount of functionality. And we're getting there with a few specific use cases. So, the use cases that we see most valuable right now are occupancy sensing, leak detection, and interfaces. We've got quite a bit of traction doing POCs in these, in these use cases already. I'll go through them one by one. So for us, occupancy sensing is really compelling. It's very easy to say, well, wow, that's a solved problem, right? We can use cameras, we can use PIR, it's a straightforward thing. But what our customers have told us is that it's not a solved problem, especially when you have buildings that have strange architecture, so the space is not regular. You have privacy concerns where you can't be tracking somebody's phone or you can't be um, tracking, uh, doing any sort of facial recognition on them. There's an opportunity for a technology that has a resolution closer to a camera with a cost of PIR. And that's what we're interested in doing. So the way we're doing occupancy sensing is printed sensors that are retrofitted into spaces in a tape-like format. So we're installing them on the floor and on the walls behind other materials, and we're able to monitor the presence of people going in and out of the room. For us, it's a really exciting use case because there is so much data that we can leverage on top of that. But as I said, the reason I'm here is that we are not sufficiently sophisticated in building the rest of the network infrastructure. And that's really what we need help doing. The second is leak detection. I think it probably defines our advantage the best because we're able to detect such a small amount of liquid over such a large area. And that area can take two formats. We're deploying them either as a tape-like format, or we're able to detect along the length, or as a large pad. We can detect a, uh, a single droplet of water over a two by three meter area. It's a really compelling solution to quite a challenging problem. We think that the physical format that we can create this leak detector in gives us some really straightforward advantages. And then the last is interfaces. So we're hearing from our customers that there is a huge drive to create smart surfaces in home and commercial spaces. So, a simple use case is controlling lighting through touching a, furniture, a piece of furniture. Um, it may seem somewhat abstract, but it's clear to us that there is a need for this, and our customers see that their customers really desire that kind of functionality. The advantage that we have is we're able to create smart surfaces at such a low cost and integrate really early into the manufacturing process. So those are the use cases that we think are the most compelling at this point. But I should also say that the other story to the company is the development of a developer community that's absolutely ravenous for the technology. So the video you saw is this small piece of hardware, and then we connect it up to a print. Right now, that's the piece of hardware and that's the type of print, obviously they can be much bigger, that are used for these POCs. But the other side of the company sells Arduino compatible devices and Raspberry Pi hats, which developers can use. And alongside developing these large relationships, we've sold over 300,000 units of these developer kits to people who are doing a humongous range of things, from people building interactive walls in schools, you know, painting pianos on the floor, silly things like that, to testing these applications themselves. And I think, I feel very at home at a conference like this because it's clear that this is also a community that's willing to prototype with devices on a small scale and see that there's a huge scalability to them as well. Um, so I'll wrap it up there and I'll just say, come and talk to me. 
So we are looking for people who can help us. We're looking for partners who can help us. We're also looking for companies that would want to work with us. Um, this is my email. Feel free to reach out uh, via email or via LinkedIn. I would love to chat. Um, and I have some time left, so if there's any questions, I'm happy to ask it. If not, I'm happy to get off stage as well. No, no, no. Let's, get him on. let's keep him on stage. First, let's give you an applause. Thank you. <laughs> Questions or ideas. I was thinking uh, you, you can build an automatic fly squatting machine probably with your... Um... We are very good at detecting uh, small flying insects, yes. But that might, might as be long as they're within a, a specific range. The smallest thing we've ever detected reliably and differentiated is a fruit fly. Okay, and, if, and then if you control drone with a fly squatter, yes. you can automatically squat the... Uh, we, could, we could do that, yeah. That's cool. Um, and, any questions? Um, yeah, they're in the back of the room. That was... Really cool talk. Thank you very much for that. Um, have you any experience with detecting velocity of rivers and streams? Ah, you know what, you're the second person in the last two days who's asked can we detect a flow rate through, yeah. th th through a given area. Um, I, what I would say is we can detect the, the, the volume of water, but we actually have not um, done enough testing for me to be definitive there. Um, I, what I do know is we can tell you if a specific pipe is full or empty. Um, we're, That's a good start though, yeah? Yeah, it's yeah. a very good start. Yeah. Um, in terms of an outdoor space, if you're really talking about a river uh, or a stream, I don't know, but we should talk because that's, that's very interesting for us. I'd like to do that, yeah. We'll chat yeah. later. Thank you. Cheers. Awesome. More people who want to chat? You can start right now. Yep. Do you use only uh, capacitance or you also use uh, resistance? So that's a very good question. Um, so we typically use either or, so we have some applications where we're using changes in resistance. Um, we have a few applications where we've used both. Um, we've had those applications typically are where we want to know the presence of something and then get a good inference of pressure. Um, so just with a printed capacitive sensor, we can start to infer pressure, but we have a few where we start to use resistance to increase the resolution. Yeah, I think the key is that the electrode is, is printed, and in general, you can say that we can increase the complexity of the print without really increasing the cost. And that is the big trick of what we're doing, is that you know, we can include multiple types of sensing on a single print, and the printer doesn't care. They just care about how wide and how long. That's really what drives the cost of it. So yeah, that's a very good question. I was thinking... Um uh, well, one question I had, you said you, you, could, you, you, you could cover this. Mm -hmm. How thick can the coverage be before uh, you, you lose your, uh, your range? So in general, uh, you know, as a, as a basic principle, the range that we get is related to the total area of the sensor. So this is a tiny little sample, right? So the range of this is effectively the same as, any, as the largest dimension here. So, you know, this is a 50, you know, may, may, maybe, maybe 100 millimeter range. Uh, which means that with this, we could cover it with something 80 millimeters thick and we'd still have a 20 millimeter effective distance. The largest distance that we will operate over is a meter. You can, in theory, insert something as thick as a meter in between. It doesn't quite scale like that, but we have yet to find an application where we need an intermediate material that thick. Typically, we're looking at the thickest that we've tested with uh, is a mattress. So that, that's the, the application where we think that there will be the largest distance between the target and the actual sensor. What's the next step going to be after you, you've painted it? I think we had a discussion before on, on roads and asphalt. And, um, so how, how far can you bring this kind of technology? Well, I, so our goal is to develop partnerships on a few different sides. So we're developing partnerships here, hopefully around communication technologies. 
We need to develop partnerships with materials companies as well. And those, the partnerships that we have underway are what will take us to very scalable applications. As I said, right now, we're retrofitting as stickers into spaces. So we literally are putting a sticker with a piece of hardware down to prove that the technology works. But for us, the real use case is the wall, the floor. And, and for me, that's, that's when we can start talking about infrastructure. It's talking about the roads and the buildings. Yeah. That's going to take a little bit longer. Can, yeah. can we get the stickers somewhere? Because they, they look Yes, cool. you can go to our website. Um, and the dev kits are all available directly on the site. Lots of, tor lots of tutorials, lots of use cases, Raspberry Pi stuff, Arduino stuff. It should all be very comfortable to people there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. <laughs>